as I use the Google Pixel 4 XL more and more, I begin to realize the Pixel 4 XL just works. There's not a whole lot of major features to make the phone difficult to use, and with stock Android, the integration of the software with the hardware has finally come together seamlessly. Somewhat. I'm Matthew with Cool Stuff, and after a little over two months, this is my Google Pixel 4 XL review. I've had my Google Pixel 4 XL for a little over two months now. There have been some pros and cons to this phone. I've got the 128GB just black version. The Oso oh Orange, which was the color I hoped for, was sold out, so I went with a D brand skin on the back that was orange. It's not completely the same color, but it's still pretty nice. This video is not sponsored by any means. Along with a D brand skin, you want to show off the back of the phone, especially if you have the Oso oh Orange, so why not get a phone case that shows off the back? I have had both the Rhino Shield bumper right here, along with some interchangeable buttons. I've got a yellow button right now. And I've also had the Caseology Skyfall Clear Case. Both cases are great. I'll place a link to both cases along with the D-Brand skin down in the video description below. This phone comes in 6GB of RAM. This has helped with RAM management for the most part. The Pixel 3 and 3XL were plagued with issues dealing with RAM management due, mo due to mostly because of the fact that it had 4GB of RAM. Google tried to do what Apple has done by coupling pure stock OS with only 4GB of RAM. However, Google has not been able to fully mirror what Apple has done. This screen is a beautiful Quad HD screen, plenty of colors and brightness. I've never had an issue of not being able to see the screen in the middle of the day. Content is beautiful and just the colors just pop. Along with that, the screen is a 90Hz display. The issue is that it's an adaptive 90Hz, but there is a way to force 90Hz in the developer settings. This will drain the battery a bit, but honestly, I've been, I haven't had an issue. In fact, I know that many reviewers have said that the battery is the main issue of the phone, but most of the time that's the Pixel 4 and not the 4XL. Many find the battery drains really fast with the 90Hz, but I have had, haven't had an issue. I use my phone a lot, I watch YouTube, surf the web, send text messages, and no issues. Yes, I do plug my phone in when I get in the car, but just some quick charging does wonders. Um, yeah. Which brings us to charging. Not only does the phone charge via USB-C, but it also has that quick charging at 18 watts. On top of that, it has 11 watt fast wireless charging. This is faster than the iPhone, which charges at 7.5 watts and even most Android phones which charge at 10 watts. Finally, Google got charging right. The Pixel 3 and 3 XL, which was the first Pixel phone with wireless charging, had fast charging, but Google limited the fast charging to its Pixel stand and select Belkin wireless chargers. All other wireless chargers could only charge the phone at 5 watts. Thank you Google for fixing this. The Pixel phones for years have been known for their cameras. In fact, Many call them the king of cameras. Google did what others do with three or even four cameras with just one, and they did it really well. Computational photography was changed drastically with the Pixel phone. Well, in order to counteract other phones adding more cameras and getting closer to the Pixel camera, Google has finally added a second camera. Sadly, they went with a two times telephoto lens instead of an ultra wide angle lens. The zoom capabilities of the Pixel 3 and 3XL and not losing much detail was great, so in my opinion, the 2x telephoto lens was not needed. At least add maybe a 3 times telephoto lens instead of just the 2x. Nowadays, most people want to get more into the shot rather than just 2 times closer with a new lens instead of the digital zoom. With this said, the cameras on the Pixel 4XL are amazing. Again. I enjoy taking random photos of objects because of how beautiful they come out. The portrait mode is amazing too. I took some shots using the Pixel 4, so take a look for yourself and I'll let you make the judgment.
the video capabilities on this phone is subpar. Where phones are starting to shoot 4K at 60 frames per second, or even 8K at 24 frames per second, and even have front-facing cameras that shoot in 4K at 60. The Pixel is sorely lacking in its capabilities. I believe it only shoots at 4K at 30, which is decent, but in 2020, it I was hoping that it would have better video capabilities. Extra features-wise, the Pixel 4 XL has one huge trick up its sleeve, Project Soli. Google calls this motion sense. This allows users to wave their hand over the phone to skip tracks and dismiss alarms. I haven't really used it for alarms, but I do use it for skipping tracks. With an update, the motion sense feature will also add play and pause functions by tapping your hand over the sensor as if you were pressing a button. More on the update part later. With the Project Soli chip and extra sensors, the Pixel 4 XL has face unlock. This face unlock is more secure than other Android ones and rivals that of the iPhone. However, one of the downsides is that with the face unlock, the user doesn't have to have their eyes open, which could be potentially an issue. However, there is word that with an update coming soon, the face unlock will require the eyes to be open and attention on the screen. Now, the main issue with the Pixel 4 phones, the software updates. When you get a Pixel phone, you expect to be one of the first, if not the first, to get the monthly updates every first Monday of the month, along with many major updates. On top of that, Google releases feature drops, I believe, every three months or so. However, issues with the Pixel 4 deal with the updates themselves. Many don't receive the updates on time, as like the December update didn't happen for many Pixel 4 users. On top of that, this March feature drop update has been rolled out except for users of the AT&T variant of the Pixel 4 phones. Google has pulled the update due to issues with it messing with good people's Google Pay and other apps. I am currently waiting for my update and it looks like I won't be receiving it for a long time as I have AT&T. I was really looking forward to this update with the feature drop. Looks like I'm just out of luck. My Samsung S10 Plus might get the update well before my Pixel phone, which is crazy considering before recently Samsung was notorious for not pushing updates out until basically the next month's update was already out. But I'll give props to Samsung for stepping up their update game and being on top of it lately. In fact, I received January's update on my Samsung phone before the Pixel 4 XL. My Pixel 3 XL has already received the March update, so we'll see if some of the features come to the 3 XL and then maybe later on I'll get those features on the 4 XL. I don't know, we'll see. Other than the update issue, I've been very pleased with my Pixel 4 XL. Finally, Google has, for the most part, figured out how to combine software and hardware in an almost seamless package. It's not quite to Apple's level, but it's getting there, and I'm okay with that. Maybe the next major Pixel device, I'm talking about the Pixel 5 and not the Pixel 4a, will be what every Pixel user and ultimately every Android user is desiring. The Android equivalent to the iPhone and iOS. Until then, the Pixel 4 is the next best thing. This has been my Pixel 4 XL long-term review. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell icon to be notified when I post another video. I try to post once a week on Monday, so thanks for watching. Until then, peace!